Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Butterfly Soup 2. In the last part, we kind of switched perspectives. We're now hanging around with Dia and her perspective on the world. And she's having some trouble with her mother and trying to keep a secret that she's kind of got a girlfriend. And it's, yeah, it's all a little bit, little bit awkward. But it's another day at school. Hopefully today will bring nicer things. Let's check out our locker. As she opens her locker, Min comes up behind her. Oh, morning. Oh, that's Korean. Min told me that phrase a long time ago. It means hi in Korean. Maybe she's touched that I still remember it. I don't think it does mean that. I think it means I love you. And I think she kind of pranked her and taught her the wrong phrase. Dia laces their hands together. I like teaching each other all these phrases. It's like a secret code. Yeah, we can even say romantic stuff without other people knowing. Like spies. Min brings Dia's hand to her lips and presses a kiss to her knuckles. Ah! Min's so romantic, she's like a prince. Suddenly, Dia realises how close of a view Min is getting of her hand. I have hair on my hands and fingers, she's gonna see it. Dia frantically wrenches her hand out of Min's grip. Huh? What's wrong? Uh, I guess Min likes me so much, nothing bad's gonna happen if I tell her. There's hair on my hands, I didn't want you to see. Min looks utterly dumbfounded. What? They're hairy, my arms too. When I wear short sleeves, you can even see it from far away. Really? I never noticed. Oh. I thought Min of all people would have noticed. She spends so much time staring at me. I'll show you. My leg hair's even worse. Dia nervously rolls up one of her leggings to reveal her hairy legs. I mean, yeah, I see it now, but it's just hair. I'm glad you're not grossed out by it. But it still might make me feel better to shave it. I won't stop you, but you really don't have to. You're drop dead gorgeous with or without it. Like, think about those poodles you like. The ones with the curly hair. Oh yeah. Carpet dogs. Yeah, whatever you want to call them. They have fur all over their legs, don't they? Doesn't it look so bad and weird when people shave their legs bare? Yeah. How's your leg hair any different? It's just a normal part of you. It doesn't make you any less cute. I guess it kind of makes sense. It makes total sense. It's the other way around that doesn't make sense. It really pisses me off when I notice all the crap the world tries to force on girls. Min gets really fired up when she talks about this stuff. Like this leg and armpit shaving shit and makes them think they have to like pink and have long hair. If you have a brother like I do, the difference is really obvious. It's all fake. Min's so smart. Thanks. I feel a little better now. Good. If anyone makes fun of you for it, oh, I'll kill, I mean, I'll, I'll be really, really mean to them. No one's around right now. I really want to kiss her. Dia leans in, and Min catches her lips in a fierce kiss. When they break apart, Min looks very proud of herself. Notice anything different? That was a really nice kiss, but I have no idea what she's talking about. I got rid of the rest of my cigarettes. You threw them away? No way, I sold them to some junior for 15 bucks. That's not good. Well, at least it's not me smoking them anymore. That's true. Is it hard to quit? I mean, it's not like I was addicted, so it wasn't that bad. I was a little worried she wouldn't listen, but now that she did, I almost feel guilty. Thanks. But I feel a bit bad I made you change just for me. Huh? You didn't make me do anything. I decided to quit because I figured it would make me happier if I got to kiss you more. Noel kept sending me these annoying as fuck studies gloating that she was going to live longer than me too. Honestly, it was worth it just to make her shut up about it. But still, if you weren't dating me, you wouldn't have quit. I guess not. But isn't that what people mean when they say a couple's good for each other? Like, they bring out the best in each other. Oh, I guess people do say that too. I'm happy you quit. Think I'm just not used to being listened to like this. I mean, I'd be a pretty shitty girlfriend if I didn't care when something was bothering you. I know you do the same for me. True. I can't believe it worked. I'm glad I said something. But isn't it common sense that you can't change people? Oh, that sounds really cynical. But sometimes it does happen. Sometimes you want someone to change and they won't. I mean, I guess it's technically true. You can't change people. All you can do is tell them how they make you feel, and then it's up to them to change. Some people will make that leap for you, but others won't. Yeah, I think I just need to make my peace with that. I'll always make that leap for you. 
even if it was from a car to a truck, while they're still driving really fast, like in the Matrix? That sounds scary, and I hope it never happens. But I wouldn't get hurt at all, and I'd look really badass doing it. You already look badass doing normal stuff like pitching, why this? Dia's heart rate quickens with excitement as Min pulls her into another kiss. Dia shudders as Min slips a hand up her shirt, sliding her warm palm across the small of her back. Ooh, is this okay? Min's hand is hot against her bare skin. Once you get over the initial shock of it, it feels nice. You want me to stop? Dia shakes her head, hiding her burning face in the crook of Min's neck. Min withdraws her hand, looking uncertain. I'm not going to do it unless you say you want me to. I just need to spit it out. It's not fair to always make her guess whether I'm having fun or not. Even if she's good at it, I need to help her out sometimes. It's just Min. Nothing bad's going to happen. Please don't stop. A wicked grin crosses Min's face, sending a rush of heat through Dia's body. Good. Then I won't. May I please get my textbooks? Uh oh. Um, yeah, kind of blocking the way. You're blocking the locker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she was there the whole time. That evening, Dia is doing her homework when her bedroom door opens. Oh, it's, uh, it's Dia's mum. Her mum silently places a bowl of sliced mango on Dia's desk and leaves the room. Dia nibbles on the fruit and continues working on her assignment. Yeah, it's, it's awkward. But it's time for another shift. We got Mincio. She with her, with her knife. She got her knife. All right, Min, let's go. Let's do it. Fourth grade now. Florida. So this is a flashback. Don't get too close to the water. Ah, come on. What's the point of a field trip to a bayou if we don't even get to splash around in it a little? I mean, there might be alligators in there. It is probably dangerous. So Juncio is Mincio's brother. Min sullenly trudges along the edge of the bayou with the rest of her classmates. I miss California. We just moved here a couple months ago. Before, the only white people I knew were hiding than my teachers. But now, every single kid in their class is white except me and Jun. I can't believe Hayden was right. Our school in California really wasn't anything like the rest of America. This bayou has a lot of biodiversity. Does anybody know what that means? Junsio raises a hand. Their teacher pauses awkwardly before nodding to him. Uh, sorry, how do you pronounce your name again? Okay, this kind of teacher. It's Junsio. Can you repeat that? Yeah, Jun Sio. She nods with her brows furrowed, still looking lost. Uh, is it okay if I call you John instead? Okay. Okay? Looking embarrassed, Jun ignores her and answers the question like nothing happened. Biodiversity is when there's a lot of different kinds of plants and animals living somewhere. That's right, John. The variety of animals thrive in this habitat. Let's see which ones we can spot from here. Yes, Sarah. I can see fish in the water. Min hisses to her twin under her breath as the lesson continues. What was that? Now the teacher's gonna think it's okay to call me Minnie or something. If people start calling you Minnie Mouse, that'll be the absolute worst. I don't think it's gonna happen. It better not. I hate Minnie Mouse. She's weak and wimpy looking. I bet if someone punched her in the gut she'd die. I'll go make the teacher call you the right name. No, don't. I don't want to make a huge deal out of it. But you should make a huge deal out of it. It's your name. It's fine. John's close enough. It looks like the ant walk is ready for us now. Everybody follow me. Thanks, teach. Their cast continues down the trail, passing a group from another school. Many of the kids gawk at her and Jun with unabashed curiosity as they pass by. One boy pulls his eyes into slits with his fingers as his friends giggle. Wow. Open racism. Oh, no. Oh, no. What the? You wanna go, dickhead? Fight me! Oh, he's mad! Oh no. I don't stand like that, bitch! Enraged, Min punches the kid in the face. He topples backward, but there's a huge splash as he lands on his butt in the shadows of the bayou. Yeah, Min seizes his head before he can get up and dunks it into the muddy water. Get him, gators! Min, stop! Hey, get off him! Half an hour later, oh god. Min sits seething in the back seat as her dad drives her and Jun home. What's wrong with you? Are you brain damaged? Rude. Now look, I have to pick you up in the middle of work because you couldn't behave yourself. I was good. I don't see why I have to be punished too. I didn't do anything wrong either. Your teacher said you tried to drown a boy. That's a lie. 
I was only holding him in underwater so the alligators would bite him. That's not any better. Their dad curses and lays down the horn as a Honda changes into their lane. Hey, he cut me off! The car lurches forward with squealing tyres. Her dad is racing to catch up to the offending Honda, his eyes wired. What's he doing? He's gone nuts. A horrible cold wash runs down Min's spine as her dad maintains his breakneck speed beside the Honda and lays down the horn. Road rage is a bad thing. Oh god. Jun screams as their dad violently swerves into the Honda, threatening to collide with them. The other driver is forced to veer off the road to avoid crashing. What's wrong with you? He was a fault. I wasn't going to let him get away with it. What are you, crazy? You could have crashed. It's your fault for making me so mad in the first place. It's bullshit. How come no one else has kids as brain damaged as you? Disrespect me again, and I'll really make you regret it. Min remembers the time her dad threw a three pound paperweight at her head because she cut her hair short and goes quiet. Fuming, her dad pulls over on the side of the road so he can focus on yelling at them. Tomorrow at school, you say sorry to your teacher for causing so much trouble. Why should I have to apologise? I didn't do anything wrong. That jerk was asking for it. He was being racist and saying we didn't know English. It doesn't matter what he said. What's going to happen? You lose an arm if you don't hit him. Don't go crazy when things like that happen. I mean, you just tried to kill a person in the road just now and you cannot talk. Yeah, exactly. What about what you just did? You just went ballistic five minutes ago. Can't you be more like your brother? Jun is so well behaved. You don't understand. You weren't there. You think you're the only ones who've had a hard time in this world? People wouldn't even hire me because of my accent. Who wants a manager who's an immigrant? When I got rejected from job after job, what was I gonna do? Complain? Cry like a baby? Why do I have to sit through this lecture too? I didn't even do anything. Be quiet. It's an important life lesson. You listen. If I got mad like Mincio and beat up all the people who rejected me, you know what would have happened? I would have landed in jail and you'd all starve to death. But that's not what happened. Instead, I just worked harder. I got certifications, studied day and night and got rid of my accent. And then I was so much more qualified than all the white guys, companies were forced to see how skilled I was. See, you have to be smart. Wasting time whining about it is never going to solve anything. This is you, whining. Min's dad imitates her in a high-pitched voice. Eh, so unfair, no fair. Ah, cry a baby. Someday I'm going to kill you. Someday I'm going to kill you. Wow, their dad is... Yeah, whoa. Pokemon poster up on the wall. At home, Min and Jin hold an emergency meeting in their room. This is an emergency meeting of the I Hate Dad Club. Club President and Strike Force Commander Min will read out our agenda today. Our agenda today is to complain about how much Dad sucks. If he's so good at not getting mad at work, how come he gets mad at us all the time? I mean, I feel like it's all connected. What do you mean? Maybe he bottles up all his bad feelings at work, so when we do anything, he blows up on us. In his head, maybe it's okay for him to yell at us because he's our dad. Well, he's not allowed to yell at me for getting mad when he's not any better. I can't believe he sided with the teacher instead of me. What a coward. I hate racists. They should all die. I feel like he had a point about the fight you got into, though. What? You're demoted. You can't demote me. I'm the chief demoter, remember? Screw that. You're my own twin and you're betraying me. You were there too. You of all people should get how I feel. It's your fault I got into trouble. Dad's right that we shouldn't react like that to buddies. We should try to be the bigger person. No, they have to die. If other people are bad, we should get to be just as bad. Didn't you learn anything today? We don't get to be bad. It will just get us into trouble. And when you talk back to dad, it just makes him go crazy. When are you gonna learn? He's just like mum. How come no one will stand up against him except me? Well sure I did then, Julius. Be a wimpy loser like him. I don't know. Maybe if we just laugh along, the other kids will want to be our friends. That's... yeah, that's the... hmm. Min, can you act? This is five years later. I uh, uh, guess I can act. Why? Can you be in a video we're making for English? Sure. What's in the video? Dia retires her ponytail, but most of her short hair immediately falls out of the elastic and ends up framing her face. Min gently tucks the curly lock behind Dia's ear, making her girlfriend blush as her fingertips brush her skin. We have to make a video about current events. 
So we chose on saving grey wolves. Who's we? Us and Noel. How come you guys keep getting these three person group projects? My teachers usually do groups of four. They are four person projects, it's just that usually no one else wants to be in our group. I would totally join these guys, these guys are fun. Oh, that's why we need more people to act out the skit we wrote. Actually, if we just made a few simple cuts to the script, three people would be more than enough. Your feelings on the subject matter are distorting your judgement. No, we need three people for the wolf family alone. There's no point in showing an entire family of wolves, just a single wolf will suffice. No, it's more sad if there's also a mummy and a daddy. Yeah, stop censoring our artistic vision. I've never seen you two gang up on Noelle like this before. It's because she's wrong. Wow. If we're going to make a video, it's our chance to create a masterpiece. We can make it so funny. Funny? That doesn't sound like the same thing Dia's going for. I want it to be like How to Be a Ninja. What's that? You haven't seen it? No. You have to watch it. It's the funniest video I've ever seen. I found it on this website called YouTube yesterday. I even converted it to MP4 online, so I could watch it on my iPod. Yeah, we are in a flashback. Min puts in one of Akasha's earbuds so she can hear the video, and Akasha takes the other. In the living room, two teenage boys do cartwheels and kip-ups to the song Kung Fu Fighting. Oh, they're both Asian. They look about our age. Hey, you. Wanna learn how to defend yourself? Aren't you tired of bullies picking on you all the time? Well then, How To Be Ninja is the DVD for you. A boy in the video bows. Hey, my name's Haneta Wakso Sishio Tadashite Teri Teriyaki Suzuki Honda Civic. Well, I'm not doing the accent because that is a that's not something I'm gonna go into. <laughs> hey, I'm Bob. I don't know if you've seen two Asian kids like me starring in anything before, and they're being funny and everything. The first lesson in being a ninja. Already, Akasha's cracking up so hard at the kid's line delivery, the iPod is quaking in her hands. It's to make loud, unnecessary sounds when you hit things. Okay. I've never seen a video like this in my whole life, it's hilarious. You must be able to transform into anything. An animal, a tree, you must be able to imitate anyone. After a kung fu battle that culminates in one of the kids resulting to using fake guns, the bloopers play. And we'll be teaching you... The boys repeatedly dissolve into laughter over the accent they're doing. They look like they had so much fun making this. Right, it's inspirational. They're like our age, and they made such an awesome video. If they can create something that iconic, so can we. Must I remind you that this is a school assignment that we're being graded on? We're still following the grading rubric? Are you? I didn't see Gun for an Academy Award on there. The script you've two written is wildly overambitious. Yeah. Under the table, Akasha immobilises one of Noelle's feet by sandwiching it between two of her own feet like tongs. Got you. Captured. I'm not captured. Noelle wriggles her foot free. When Akasha tries to trap it again, Noelle retaliates by pinning one of Akasha's feet against the leg of the table while oh, they're playing footsie. No fair, I'm wearing flip-flops and you're wearing real shoes. You gotta go easy on me. You chose the battleground. You don't get to complain. What the hell? They always act so demented around each other. When you're done playing footsies, can we talk about what you guys actually need from me? Akasha Noel Free is looking embarrassed. What? Hello? Because I'm acting in your project? Can you meet us in the park this weekend? Yeah, that's where we're filming. There's kind of a woodsy looking spot at the edge of it. Do I need to bring anything? No, just you. We're still working on the script, so we'll give it to you there. We'll take care of the costumes too. Sakura and Yuki have a ton of stuff we can use. So they're going to bring it all. Cool, I'll be there. This is going to be jokes. Alright, is the park. When Ming gets there, she spots Akasha waiting in the shade under the tree. Dog alert, I can see a dog. Where is everyone? Noelle said Dia's mum just picked her up. It's so annoying how Dia's mum has always been fine with Noelle but not me. And Sakura and Yuki are running late because they couldn't find a hat that they wanted to bring. We don't need Chris and Liz till the full scene or so, so I told them that they could show up whenever. Wait, they're acting in it too? Yeah, we pretty much ended up summoning the entire baseball club to help. Min joins Akasha under the shade. So, any progress on your crush? Didn't I already tell you that I got rejected? You told me you half assed a confession to fucking text before chickening out and passing it off as a joke. Well, I was flirting pretty hard before it happened. So, either way, they should have gotten the message. At least subliminally. Subliminally. 
have you been listening to a thing I've been saying? Go big or go home. I literally can't even tell who it was you were flirting with. How about playing footsie the other day, you know? Okay, I know, I know. What's next? Confessing to them on April Fool's Day. Actually, that's not a bad idea. You gotta be kidding me. When Dia and Noel show up, Min runs over and presses a kiss to Dia's cheek. Oh, that's it, I love you. I told Dia that phrase meant hi a really long time ago. Maybe I should come clean about it now that we're actually dating. I don't want her to stop saying it though. Noel wearily hands Min her script. While we're waiting for the others, you can at least familiarise yourself with your lines. It's unreasonably hot out, so Min fans Dia with the script. Who am I playing? The evil hunter. Whoa, sick! What do I do? Are you illiterate? Just read the script. I will, just give me the Sparklotes version first. To summarise, grey wolves are set to be removed from the endangered species list. I'll be playing in a reporter. First I'll interview an environmentalist, Dia. Next, I'll interview you, Evil Hunter. Lastly, I'll interview a family of wolves on their opinion. During this last interview, the Evil Hunter kills the wolf pup, played by her car shark. This is gonna be funny. Alright, you really don't like this script, huh? It's clearly biased. It doesn't make sense to extend special treatment to wolves just because they're cute and fuzzy. It makes sense in my heart. From an objective numerical standpoint, their populations have recovered enough that these protections are no longer needed. Humans have a thriving population too, does that mean aliens are allowed to hunt us for sport? Min reads the script as they argue. It's physically battered and marked with edits. They must have been fighting over this for hours. Guys, wait, I've got another idea. I just saw a video of a guy setting up a pile of leaves on fire and it exploded. Can we try to work that into the video too? No. Dia slips her hand into Min's as the Kasha and Noel argue. Looks like we have some time to kill before everybody else arrives. Min looks around the park. Okay, let's have a look around the park. It is a... I'll, I'll leave the dog till last. There's like a... Playground? I don't know. I'm sad we're too big for playgrounds now. They should make playgrounds for teens and adults. Yeah, all the scenarios we come up with while playing pretend was so fun. My favourite was the one where we pretended we were runaways starting our own clan. That one was so popular, some of the kids joining in weren't even our friends. It sucks that the teachers made us stop because everyone was digging huge holes in the ground and making stuff out of mud. Was that why? I thought it was because it got too big. I remember like 30 of us were doing it. Maybe it was a combination of both, I don't know. I didn't even dig anything. My house was just a bunch of pine needles I arranged in a circle shape. You mean our house? We were married. In the pretend world, I mean. Yeah, we were? I saved you for being kidnapped by bandits and I made you marry me as a reward. You did the exact same thing as the bandits then. No I didn't. The bandits wanted you for bad reasons, but I wanted you for nice reasons only. And didn't you say this game was your favourite? You must have killed it. Realising that Min's right, Dia is so embarrassed that she doesn't respond. Okay, there's a tree stump? I don't know. It's a dead husk of a tree stump. Dia. There's so rocks at the tree stump. I bet we can knock the bark off it. Okay. They survey the ground for rocks to throw, but there's only dirt and twigs. Hmm, we should look around for big rocks. Good idea. Okay, we need we need some rocks. Uh about the picnic table first. Search for rocks at the dog. Min scours the ground for rocks. Meanwhile, Dia is almost in tears watching a dog run in circles around the park. He looks like a banana dipped in chocolate and he doesn't even know it. God, the way you think is so fucking cute. Alright, the dog catches a frisbee in his mouth and brings it to its owner. Bucket, good boy. Bucket. Want me to ask if we can pet it? No, I think I can do it, thanks. Oh, sure, go for it. Don't worry, I'll take over if they don't let you pet it. Dia nods and hesitantly approaches the dog's owner. She stands about a foot behind him, unnoticed. She must be psyching herself up to do it. Can I pet your dog? Oh, you scared me. Sure, you can pet him. Bucket happily rolls over onto his back, exposing his belly. Always oh, a friendly dog. Dia gives the dog a hearty belly rub as he blissfully rides around in the grass. What a sweetheart. Do you want to pet it too? She's talking to me. Pet the dog. Yes, pet the dog too. Min rubs the dog's belly with both hands. 
his rough fur is a little smelly. When she stops, the dog looks up at her expectantly. He's asking for more. You're still petting him too. He really wants the whole crew massaging him at once. After a solid five minutes, Bucket still hasn't had enough pets. It's okay, you can stop. I don't want to keep you guys all day. Oh, okay, thanks. Wait, have you seen any huge rocks around here? Oh, how about the one over there? He points at a slab of rock lying in the dirt. Yeah, perfect! Now we just need to find a rock for me too. This one's for me. This one's for you. Min squeezes Dia's hand as the guy walks off with his dog. You did good talking to that guy. I'm trying to get better at it. I used to think I was just awkward because of my ear, but I think I partially picked it up from my mum. She's old and still scared of answering the phone and talking to strangers. I mean, it is relatable. I want to be different. Oh, I get that feeling. I don't want to be like my dad, no matter what. That's why I'll never have kids. I'd never want to do the things he did to me, to somebody else. You wouldn't be like him. You're not a bad person. But I'm worried it's easy to do it by accident. Okay, let's look for more rocks. What about the, the picnic bench? Esther is seated at the bench, fiddling with the camcorder. Oh, you're here too. Yeah, I'm being the cameraman. Akasha kept insisting I'd be good at it because I'm artsy, so... Did she do something to her hair? It looks way different than usual. Wow, your hair's so flat today. Uh, thanks. Esther gives her a weird look. Meanwhile, Dia searches the ground for big rocks. What are you doing? We're looking for rocks. Have you seen any? There's a pretty big one over there. Esther points to a large stone on the ground. Yeah, thanks. This one's as big as my fist. Yeah, this will work. Work for what? Okay, we're gonna crash a thing. But I do want to keep looking at the dog. If I were in charge of naming that dog, I'd name him Banana Dipped in Chocolate. That's way too long. His first name could be Banana, middle name Dipped in, last name Chocolate. That's still the exact same length. But Banana is a cute nickname. Esther's playing with the camcorder settings. Cool. So let's let's do this rock thing. Throw rocks at a dead tree stump. Yeah! Min hurls a rock at the dead stump. It hits with a thwack, causing a small piece of dry bark to fly off. Cool. Yeah, she's so impressed by me. I bet she wants to kiss me so bad. Dia followed Min's lead and fires a rock at the stump. It slams into the stump so hard, its top half explodes in a shower of bark shards. Whoa, that was so badass. Thanks. She's the most perfect girl in the world. Min has to hold herself back from grabbing Dia and kissing her senseless. I wish we didn't have to hire that we're dating. I get why we have to, but I wish I could just shout it from the mountain tops that you're my girlfriend. It's still true, even if you can't say it. But it'd be nice to say it so everyone knows. Yeah, I know what you mean. I wish we could go on more dates. I want to go everywhere with you. The aquarium, pet smart, home depot light section, airplane. Airplane? Why? Do you like flying? Not really. I like looking out the windows and eating the pretzel packet. And Southwest gives you a little stirrer with your drinks that shake like a heart, but that's it. We haven't done it together before though, so I think it'll be fun. I want to see how you react to it. Me too. I want to see your face when they give you the heart-shaped stirrer thing. We should each ask for a different free beverage and share, so I get to try two drinks instead of just the one. Imagining it makes Min's heart feel like it's going to explode. Forgetting her surroundings, Min surges forward to kiss her just as Dia does the same, causing her mouths to crash together unexpectedly hard. Ow. Oh, sorry. I got too excited. That was the worst kiss ever. Then let's redo it. Wait, when people see us... Oh, I forgot. Maybe we should lie down in the grass. Hmm? Why? That way, it will look like we're just wrestling. Uh, okay. Dia lies down, and Ming gets on top of her and starts making out with her. It doesn't look anything like wrestling. Dia clutches at Min's back, and Min presses kiss after kiss to her lips. You're so cute, you know that? Maybe a little... Dia goes still underneath her, suddenly looking uncomfortable. What's wrong? A bug crawled under my shirt. Dia sits up and unsuccessfully gropes around under her hoodie for the bug. Every neuron in Min's brain misfires as Dia hikes her hoodie all the way up over her bra, exposing her bare torso. Ooh. I'm looking respectfully, I'm looking respectfully. I don't know where it went. 
Min is so distracted that it takes her a few seconds to notice the bug crawling onto Dia's chest. Oh, it's just a beetle. I got it. She grabs hold of it just as Akasha and Noel come jogging up to him. Here we go. Everyone's arrived. Uh, we should get in costume now. Oh, bad, bad time. Dia frantically pulls her hoodie back on. Oh, whoa. I was just helping her. A bugger crawled up her shirt. Where was he gonna crawl next? Down her pants? What the fuck? That's not what was happening. Look, the bug's right here. Min raises her hand to show it to them, but it's gone. Must have flown off. I mean, I'm not judging. If I had a ticket to Boob City, I know what I'd be doing too. But literally here, in broad daylight? Really? Oh, for fuck's sake, we literally weren't doing anything. Dia's face is still flushed pink as they walk over to the others hand in hand. Hey, was she making you uncomfortable? I can make a stop. No, it's okay. Thanks for asking. I feel pampered with you. Good, because you deserve to be pampered. The group gathers around, Sakura and Yuki, as they haul a pile of clothes and props out of the duffel bag. Sorry, Relate. I was turning my closet upside down, trying to find everything. You found your bleach shirt, though, so full respect for that. Any objections if I play music from my phone? Are you going to play anime openings? You better. Maybe. Then yes. Oh, how about K-pop? I just discovered this amazing group called Super Junior. I don't know what that is. You can play one song. Yosh. <laughs> she plays a song from her phone speakers and tries to untangle a Nerf gun from a coat belt. The people around me tell me I'm too aggressive. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know K-pop stuff at all. So anime stuff, yep. Yeah, K-pop, I, I don't know. Sorry. So that's probably a real song. Oh, it's not so bad. Isn't it great? Korean guys are so much better than American guys. How so? They're all so beautiful and kind-hearted. Not so many pers like the guys here. I need to find myself on Oppa. This is weird. Should I say something? I guess she doesn't mean any harm by it. She's trying to appreciate the culture. Here, Min. This trench coat's yours. It's my brother's Yoite costume. It's supposed to have a hat too, but I think he lost it. Yoite? The fuck's that? It's from the amazing series Nabari no Oh, duh. Alright, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad show that one. Okay, wait a minute. Is this all anime stuff? I believe the correct term is cosplay. What? Akasha, I thought you meant normal costumes, like Halloween costumes. You didn't ask, so Akasha, what are you wearing? What the fuck? <laughs> it's my baby wolf costume. How do I look? Like someone wearing cat ears. Is this really gonna come across as a wolf? Yuki, this would have been more convincing if he had fursuits. Fursuits are so expensive though. I might just become a doctor just to be able to afford them someday. Also, you guys don't have to call me Yuki anymore. I realised a few days ago that going by a Japanese name in real life is kind of weird if you're not actually Japanese. Me too, actually. Even if we love anime, it's a bit much. It took you all the way till now to realise that. Well... Better late than never, thank god. So, what are your names? Eh, Grace. Grace? What the? And my real name is Saida. At least that one sounds kinda like Sakura. Akasha, what does your outfit have to do with being a wolf? You only need the ears and paws to get the point across. So you're saying I should be naked? No, I'm not! Dia holds up her environmentalist costume. Where do I change? I use the restroom over there. It's just the one family room, so you'll have to all take turns getting changed. Unless, you know, you want Min to get more bugs off you. You freaking hot, you're deranged if you think I'm fucking her in a park bathroom. What the hell? <laughs> one way ticket to Boob City. Stop calling my girlfriend Boob City. Why are you so obsessed with that phrase now? I'll go now. In the meantime, Min, can you help me pitch this tent? It's going to be the setting of your first scene. Ah, <sighs> fine. I can help too, since I don't need to get into a costume. Min helps Esther and Earl carry the box with the tent in it. I don't understand why Akasha keeps making those crash jokes about you two. It's not as if two girls can actually have sexual relations. The hell are you talking about? Yeah, they can. Are you dense? Humans weren't evolved for that. The anatomy makes it impossible. How's it impossible? You can just use other body parts, like your fingers. Fingers? You must be mistaken. Are we really having this conversation right now? <laughs> nah, it's true. I mean, girls love manga, here's the thing. What? Did you think lesbians gave up sex for life? She's serious. 
How sheltered is she? Noah's so shocked that she doesn't speak for a while. Esther wipes sweat off her brow and points at a clearing in the dry grass. Yeah, so for reference, the, the girl girl manga thing's called Yuri. Okay, that spot over there might look nice on film. Isn't it a bit close to the ravine though? There's a steep downhill slope right behind it. So, it's not like the tent's going to teleport backward after we've nailed it down. Yeah, unless the typhoon blows us over, I think we'll be fine. Okay, I see that I'm outnumbered here. But don't say I didn't warn you. Min hears rustling behind her. She turns around and sees Akasha making the leaf pile. Eh <laughs> Wait, is she trying the exploding leaf thing? Akasha, that is not allowed! As Noel chases after Akasha, Min and Esther lay out their tent in the spot they picked. She's so friggin' anal, she's probably sexually attracted to laws. I bet she loses her mind whenever she sees jaywalkers. She does! It's like she thinks someone's gonna go, good job Noel. you're the best at following the rules, and give her a gold star for it. Min squints in confusion at the steps to set up the tent. I can't picture this shit, where do the poles go? They crisscross in the middle, see? Here, just hold that end and stick it through the metal ring. Like magic, the tent pops out and into the third dimension. Holy shit, you're like a camping prodigy. I mean, all I did was follow the instructions. Now we just have to drive the stakes into the ground. Min pounds each stake into the dirt with a large stone, enthralled that hitting something is actually constructive for once. Fuck yeah. Meanwhile, Esther takes her sketchbook out of her backpack and starts writing in it. What are you doing? Esther stops, looking embarrassed. I'm writing down what you said earlier as inspiration for my webcomic, like for character dialogue. I started doing this when there's something interesting happens, so I can remember later. Oh, what did I say that was interesting? You said I was a campion prodigy, you know, instead of a prodigy. What's so special about that? They're pretty much the same anyway. I don't know, I just thought it was a neat detail. Obviously, I only use it if you're okay with it though. I mean, sure, I don't really care. What's it for again? A comic? Yep. Like, you know, Garfield? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. It's still a work in progress, but basically, it's about a bunch of teenagers who have the power to shift into alternate dimensions. It's kind of sci-fi-y, I guess. Oh, so like a superhero comic? No, 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 there's no supervillains or anything. All their problems come from the way they use their own powers. Like, when you're in the parallel universe, you're gone from your own original universe, right? But what if you get tied up with something while there, and can't come back? That'd suck ass. I wouldn't get to see Dia or my friends anymore. Exactly. No one from the world you left behind would know why you disappeared, and you'd become a missing person there. I always get so stressed about that when reading Narnia and time travel stories. I've never heard her talk this much before. She must really be hyped about the webcomic thing. Anyway, a lot of miscommunication happens between the characters because of issues like that. No offence, but I can't stand stories that revolve around misunderstandings. It's so frustrating when the whole problem is literally just people being bad at talking. If you hurt someone, it should be on purpose. But those kinds of problems are the most realistic. In real life, people hurt each other by accident all the time. Like, how? You know how before our school became 93% Asian, it used to have a football team? They die because Asians don't care about football, right? Same as the real baseball team? Yeah, no one will go to the games. As a last ditch effort to help them last year, my math teacher offered us two points of extra credit for coming to a football game. So I went to help my grade. But as soon as I got home, my dad yelled at me for going to a game instead of studying. He didn't get that we had the exact same goal, me getting good grades. Wait, what ethnicity are you? Oh, I'm black and Chinese. And your dad's the black one? Uh, yeah he is. I didn't know black people cared about grades. Oh my god, that's like, pretty racist of you to say. Bewildered, Min completely misses the tent stake while she was trying to hit. Huh? How's that racist? Why would you assume black people don't care about their grades? I didn't mean it as a diss or anything. I don't care about grades either, so it's not like I was looking down on them. But why even bring my race into it like that? I was just asking a question. Didn't you bring up race first? You were talking about Asians. I'm Asian, so I'm allowed to say that. Sure, whatever. But if I knew you'd be so fucking sensitive about it, I wouldn't have asked in the first place. Wow, so instead of saying sorry, you're insulting me? Well, why the hell should I apologise? I wasn't even trying to be offensive. It's not like I purposely called you th Whoa, okay. Wow, thanks for not calling me that word. I'm just saying you're overreacting. There's real racist people out there who hate minorities, and you're calling me racist just because I accidentally made one little mistake? 
It's not just one little mistake. You say weird, ignorant stuff like this all the time. No, I don't. Like what? Like when he randomly told me that my hair was flat. What was I even supposed to say to that? Yours too. Get a grip. That's not even real racism. You're seriously trying to explain what real racism is to me, a black and Chinese person. Look, I'm a minority too. Us even fighting is dumb. You being Asian doesn't mean you're not racist. The worst racism I've ever seen was when I went to China. God, you're being stupid. Esther throws her stake down and storms off. Dumbfounded, Min just stands there with her heart racing a mile a minute. How'd it blow up like this? I wasn't even trying to start something. Shit, did anybody else hear us fighting? Min nervously looks around, paranoid that her friends heard what happened. It's hard to tell if they did. Min frantically hammers the last stake in place, her stomach churning with a mixture of shame and panic. She hears footsteps behind her and nearly has a heart attack when she turns to see Chrissa walking over. Ah, fuck! What if Esther told Chrissa I'm racist against black people? She's back too! I don't want her to hate me. She might even kick me off the team. Do you need help with the tent? Nah, I'm good. I guess you could say it's not, not tent to be. I should be extra careful not to offend her. Ah, yeah, great joke. Thanks. I feel like not enough people appreciate my puns. Having donned her reporter costume, Noelle returns to place a sleeping bag inside the tent. Min, it's your turn to get changed. Where'd Esther go? We're about to start shooting. I can't tell her Esther left because she thinks I'm racist. Uh, she just randomly walked off. What? How come? Who knows? She's so weird. Oh no. In the park's restroom, Min quickly changes into her evil hunter getup. I'm gonna be sweating buckets wearing all this in this weather. Thank god they couldn't find the hat, or it would have been even worse. Dia perks up when Min rejoins the group. You look cool. You should get a coat like that, for real. Normally this would send Min over the moon, but she feels so sick to her stomach, she can't properly appreciate it. Thanks. It's me, your racist girlfriend. Dia definitely wouldn't want to be with me anymore if she found out I was a racist. Do I look okay? You look cute in glasses. Is this a character from something? It does kind of give off a nerdy animal lover energy. No idea. Esther, I like your hair. Oh, yeah, thanks. Bun buddies. Bun buddies. Okay, this video's gone on for a bit longer than what I thought. We're going to have to leave this one here. And we're going to film this video in the next video. This is the show signing off. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.